Hello everyone, how's it going? It's Swaybe. I hope you enjoyed yesterday's video where we kind of got an idea about what Undead was going to look like. Uh, but today, so much more has happened. We had two more reveals from Slissa and Tesdi, and we also had a fantastic podcast with uh, Educated Collins and Shady Bunny with both Gia and John McIntyre, where they kind of talked a little bit more in depth about some minions, as well as minions being removed, some coming back. We have a lot to discuss. Let's go. So just like before, we're going to go in chronological order, starting with Sliss's reveals. All of Sliss's minions were dual type minions. Now we saw two of these minions yesterday in the blog post, but there were so many more. On tier one, we have the Thorn Captain. This is a Quillbore pirate with 4-1 stats. After a card is added to your hand, gain plus one health until the next turn. So the health buff isn't permanent. Um, it does feel kind of good for the heroes that tend to stay down a little bit longer. If you start with this on the first turn um, and maybe find a few more, uh, could be kind of interesting just to have that additional health with that pretty massive attack. Tier 2, we briefly discussed the Blazing Skyfin. This is a Murloc Dragon. Um, I do think this is incredibly powerful and has very much longevity to it with that additional stat gain with battle cries. We know how battle cry prevalent to Murloc are and the end game possibilities with dragons as well. Also on tier two, we had the Corpse Refiner. This is an undead pirate with two, three stats. This is Avenge four and this minion sells for one more gold. I'm pretty curious about this. Obviously we're seeing a whole lot of tokens coming in. Avenge four seems kind of hefty. Um, I think regardless, you'll probably be able to get at least two gold from it, uh, especially with the amount of token prevalence coming in with Undead, but uh, not quite sure how far you can greed this. That being said, me being who I am, I'm going to push the boundaries on this card and see how much gold we can possibly get with the Corpse Refiner. Uh, unsure though, probably, probably a, a pretty okay tempo piece. We'll see how greedy we can actually make this be. Next, we have the Felemental. This is an elemental demon with 3-1 stats. It is a battle cry where minions in Bob's Tavern have plus one, plus one for the rest of the game. This is pretty great because we know that kind of shop eating concept of demon. We also know the cyclical kind of nature of elemental. Um, the fact that it is a battle cry does function with Bran. Overall, pretty, pretty interesting unit there. And it's all minions in Bob's Tavern to know it's not just elemental or demon which does make it that much better. Moving on, we've got the Puffer Quill. This minion, okay, this minion seems absolutely insane. It is a Quillbore Naga, 2-4. And after a spell is played on this, gain Poisonous until the next turn. Oh, this seems really gross. Like, I think it's really good, though, because Quillbore stat gain sometimes can just snowball out of control. We all know how big dynamic duo can get, especially at the end of a really nice large Charlie board. Um, so I do think the scaling aspect of Quillbore and having a possibility of a comeback mechanic, having poison in seems pretty nice. Um, I do think on four, it might be a little bit too strong on four, but that's yet to be seen. We'll see it in play. Um, and then also to note, Slissa notes this in the video, it does have that kind of Quillbore, um, trait where the golden version does give the permanent poison. Um, which does interact really interestingly with a minion we're going to talk about later as I learned on the podcast. Next on tier four, we have the Magma Lock. This is an elemental Murloc, only 1-1. One, one. However, at the end of your turn, gain plus one, plus one, and you repeat for each minion you played this turn. So uh, basically like a Domo, but without the elemental requirement. So you can cycle things. Uh, it is an elemental Murloc, both pretty cyclical in nature. So this magma lock can definitely be an end game board piece, depending on what you're looking at. On tier five, we have the Cyborg Drake. This is a mech dragon. It's a two eight with divine shield. And okay, it, your divine shield minions have plus 10 attack. That being said, this is like an aura situation where your divine shields, when they lose that shield, will lose that 10 attack. However, that's still so much value. That's so much attack. I feel like this is going to get nerfed. I have good feelings about Divine Shield builds now. Like this feels very, very interesting. Also on tier five, we discussed yesterday the Sin Runner Blanche. This is the 4-4 Undead Beast, uh, which reborns with full health and enchantments, meaning Divine Shield from a Glow Scale comes back with the Reborn. 
um, all of the enchantments you put on it, but it's just that one turn. So it's not like Terragosa where it's permanent. You don't get to keep snowballing the stats that way, um, but you do every single turn. So that's definitely something that could get out of control very, very quickly. Moving on to the dual tier sixes. These are very interesting. First, we've got the Fell Stomper. This is a demon beast with three, five. After you summon a minion in combat, give your minions, all your minions, plus three attack. Really, really beneficial for summoning boards, swarm boards. Kind of reminds me of Deathwing, you know? I actually am unsure about how much I like this on tier six. This feels very reminiscent of some tier five situations we've seen in the past. I don't hate it. I don't love it right now. It almost feel, it feels like a bird buddy. It feels like, like Deathwing. Um, I don't, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. I don't want to make any judgments, but we'll, we'll see. On to Greta Gold Gun. Why did I say it like that? That was a very enunciated T. Greta. Greta Gold Gun. This is a Naga pirate with two nine stats and a spellcraft of making a friendly pirate or Naga golden until next turn. Good to note that you can't actually use this on Greta. This isn't really a minion you want to triple, as Slissa said, because the golden version doesn't do anything. You get one less golden unit, actually. So not really a minion that you really desire to triple. This seems so gross. It's, it's golden hammer, but connected to a minion. I... I'm very excited about this. So this is the one um, minion that I was mentioning earlier with the very interesting interaction with the Puffer Quill. Um, Gia brought this to the attention of the podcast earlier, where if you want to, you can do this, where you play the um, the gold gun from Greta on Puffer Quill and then another spell to proc that poison. And then in returning back to the shop in the next combat, that poison is permanent because it did gain those stats at the time that it was golden. However, if you do it in the reverse, where you put a spell on it and it becomes poisonous and then you Greta it, it does not keep that poison. So that could be something very useful for future. And our last tier six, we have Mecha Jaraxxus. <laughs> this is a Mech Demon 315 with a battle cry of add a random Mech Demon to your hand. Um, so there are all of these tier one and they're all able to magnetize to both mech and demon. Uh, there's three options here. There's Baltharok, which is a 10-1 reborn. So that can give either a mech or a demon reborn if you attach it. There's also Magtheridon Prime, which is a 110 taunt. So you're looking at that 10 health to add to something. And then there's Rusted Reggie, which is a 5-5 Wind Fury. Um, Slissa also makes a note that you can indeed triple these units. So yes, Mecha Jaraxxus is a battle cry if you play it with Bran. Um, if you cycle them and you end up do finding like a triple rusted Reggie, you're going to get a 5-5 Mega Wind Fury. That's the only one that you're really going to benefit from aside from your Discover. Uh, but something really interesting to note there. So that's all the dual type minions that we got from Slissa. And then we went into Tezdi's reveal, which was so spicy. First, we have the Sindori straight shot. This is on tier four, okay? Uh, this is a neutral minion, so it's available in every lobby. It is a three, four divine shield wind fury that whenever it attacks, removes reborn and taunt from the target. Um, I think this is such a fantastic removal for Leaper builds because we don't have white main anymore. I think that this is going to be incredibly useful. So, so good. I'm very excited about this because uh, Leapers, they're not my favorite. Moving on, we have Chronomu the Dragon, who's a 4-4. And while this is in Bob's Tavern, gain the stats of any minions sold. This is such a cool mechanic, and you have those like feels bad moments where you uh, you had to have a Mithrax. You tripled into a Mithrax, and you kind of played into it, created this really, not really large Mithrax, but large enough that you're like, oh, you know, these stats feel bad to lose. Not anymore. Now you have Chronomu, who can gain those stats. And another really interesting interaction is if you do decide to get the Ball of Minions, you golden the Ball of Minions, you make it very large, you sell it. Not only do two minions in your... Um, Warband get those Ball of Minion stats. Also, Chronomu, if Chronomu is in the shop, gets those stats as well. Super fantastic. I, <laughs> I love this card. I think it's so incredibly interesting. And being a dragon, it can get Divine Shield from Amber Guardian. It can get Divine Shield from Nadina. Uh, absolutely phenomenal. 
Now we have General Drakisoth the Dragon. This is a 2 8 battle cry, which is add a 2 1 Smolderwing to your hand that gives another dragon plus 5 attack. And that Smolderwing, as you can see, is 2 1, and it is a battle cry for that plus 5 attack. Uh, this is pretty interesting on tier 4 because it is kind of that economy where you do add something to your hand. Uh, with the battle cry situation, really interesting with Bran of adding to your hand, and then also the additional attack, Bran dragons. Bran dragons haven't ever really been a thing, but like, that seems like a great thing to have. <laughs> the last minion we saw from Tesdi is Titus Rivendare, which is replacing Baron Rivendare as the neutral 1 7, and also a functional change here where Baron Rivendare couldn't stack if you had two on your board. Um, Death Rattles still only triggered twice. However, uh, with the text change of your Death Rattles trigger an extra time, that means that having two Tituses on your board will indeed stack. Now we're moving on to the podcast. Uh, gained so much useful information in this podcast, but one of the major takeaways that I had that I think that is is kind of a question for everyone, uh, dual type minions, What when are they going to be in what lobbies? So basically, as long as one of the minion types is present, the dual type minion can be in that lobby. So it's an either or situation. If it's both, that can also happen, but it is indeed either or as well. So the first thing that we talked about during the podcast was what minions were removed. So let's go through those very quickly. We have Imprisoner, Salt Scale Honcho, Glyph Guardian, Yoho Ogre, Stasis Elemental, uh, Cadgar, Bonker, Major Domo, Draconid Enforcer, Mechano Tank, Baby Crush, uh, and Mechano Tank, pardon me, Mechano Tank and White Mane both had already been removed, uh, but also were listed here as well. Uh, Razor Gore, Pale Scale, and Tony Two Tusk and Imp Mama. So we kind of went a little bit in depth on some of these removals. Some of them specifically were for, you know, bringing in a certain dual minion or a new minion and wanting to have that space of, you know, this many dragons on this tier. Um, and Prisoner did get replaced, which we'll talk about. Uh, but things like that, where it was kind of more of like a low impact change. Um, so the, there were some big ones, right? Cadgar being removed was a, a, a very, very, very big change that basically kills um, the Scam Pirates, the Scallywag Pirate Comp. That's dead now. And then if you ever did like Cadgar transitions with um, Alley Cat, that's no, no longer a thing. Um, but it, you know, there is a lot of Reborn coming and Cadgar with that interaction is, uh, seems to be a little bit too much. And Definitely one of those very, very important cards. So Cadgar is gone. Rest in peace. Salt Scale Honcho, uh, the devs kind of saw a replacement in the way of like the Magma Lock and Skyfin in the way that those units are Murloc that scale themselves as well. In terms of the Stasis Elemental, the, the replacement would, would be kind of the Felemental is from what I understand. Major Domo, I'm really sad about Major Domo, but you know, Murloc and Elemental, uh, we have Magma Lock. Uh, there's still the synergy with Magma Lock of Master of Realities, uh, and the text on Magma Lock made sure that it's similar to Major Domo, where it's playing additionally on top of the plus ones, uh, so that Master of Realities effect can still happen. Razor Gore, I'm also pretty sad about. I know it was kind of a low impact dragon. We're getting some pretty cool dragons coming in. Caligos didn't get a buff, unfortunately, but we have a lot of really interesting dragon situations coming up for us. And then the Tony switch was kind of uh, from what it seems like a one to one with Greta Gold Gun, where you're getting this golden unit. And oh, I have been griefed by Tony so many times. Good riddance. Goodbye, Tony. We are not friends. So that's just the basics of what got removed. And getting added back are two units that we've seen in the past. Icky Imp on tier one is coming back with kind of that token ability of summoning those two extra units. So kind of Imprisoner, but a little bit better, honestly, in this meta of what seems to be a very token heavy meta. And speaking of tokens, another Avenge unit coming back with Budding Green Thumb uh, with those Avenge and like Reborn death synergies. So very, very excited for Green Thumb. I absolutely adored Green Thumb way back when, thought he was so good, so happy to see him back. His face is a little bit cursed, but we don't need to talk about that. We also saw some revamped minions, uh, and these images are taken from the podcast, so thank you so much, Collins, for making these. Um, we have the Amber Guardian, whose gold version now gives two divine shields instead of one divine shield with additional stats. I love this. I love this change. I think it's fantastic. 
Um, also super helpful with the, the new Drake that gives the Divine Shields plus 10. Absolutely fantastic. Now, Peggy Brittlebone, really interesting. So Peggy Brittlebone would have been an undead pirate, but there was really no undead synergy for Peggy. So Peggy is now Peggy Sturdybone in human form uh, and simply just a pirate, so is not a dual minion. And we kind of touched on Titus Rivendare earlier. Baron Rivendare would have been in that situation of being undead, uh, but important for Baron to be in all lobbies. So Titus Rivendare is now uh, our new Baron with the functional change of being able to stack. In addition, we had some hero revamps as well. We have Gale Wing with a new hero power. Now, this is very interesting. Uh, I remember Gia asking chat at this point if uh, we all thought it was a buff or a nerf. Uh, we have a new hero power with, we still have Westfall with the one cost. We have Iron Forge and then the Eastern Plague Lands. Um, Westfall is now a plus two plus two. Iron Forge is two turns now and you gain two gold in two turns. And then Plague Lands is three turns and discover a minion in three turns. So Plague Lands is now Iron Forge. So that five turn doesn't exist anymore. Uh, I think this is so interesting. My initial gut reaction was this is a nerf. Oh, another important note that I almost forgot. Uh, Gale Wing can't visit the same location twice. So you can't just slam Plague Lands and get those discovers over and over again. After going to Plague Lands, you have to go to Iron Forge or Westfall. So this is going to be very interesting. And honestly, I think it may lead to a new like OP Gale Wing curve, uh, but that is yet to be seen. I am pretty excited for this. Like at first I felt in my gut, it was a nerf. I was like, this is a nerf. This is not good. However, how often did any of us use Plague Lands going uh, for five turns for that decrease uh, in Tavern tier? Really pretty much everyone played the same curve of Iron Forge, Iron Forge, Iron Forge. So excited to see what happens there. Now, Millie, Maleficent, Mana Storm got a buff here. I think it's a buff. You summon a mech and it's a passive and the mech gets plus two attack. So this is also in combat. So putting that replicating menace on a deflecto, those one ones that get spit out there also get plus two attack. I think that is a great functional change. Kind of, again, very reminiscent of Deathwing, um, but definitely better than Millie was before, absolutely. Our good old friend Jaraxxus got a buff as well. Uh, now, instead of just giving your whole board plus one, plus one, uh, if you are playing an entire board of demons, that is, you now choose a friendly demon and it consumes a minion in the tavern. So it's kind of like Mind Muck or Felbat, but it's a one cost hero power instead. Uh, that is definitely a buff, but it is a little feels bad because it can't target the minion. Like you can't choose which minion it consumes. However, like you can't really do that with demons anyways. Uh, definitely better than a whole board plus one plus one and kind of opens the door for Jaraxxus to be like a one demon comp, like a trickster comp with many more levels. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try it. I'm not really someone that enjoys demons. I'm not a demon enjoyer, but I will try it. And last but not least, we have a nerf to Pyramid. Uh, now it is give a minion plus one health and then the plus one health each turn you don't use this. It started at two, uh, so you're essentially getting one less health a turn now. Um, I think this is interesting because before quests, Pyramid was, was doing pretty well, and then quests happened, and Pyramid couldn't really hold up to kind of what heroes needed to complete quests, so Pyramid didn't see a whole lot of play. Uh, so I'm curious to see how Pyramid goes in this new meta. So overall, we had 16 removed minions and two re-added back. So overall today, we had those dual type minion reveals from Slissa. We had those additional minion reveals from Tezdi. And then we had a fantastic uh, chat with Gia and John and Collins and Shady Bunny and learned a lot about what's to come for this game. I'm very excited. Again, this new expansion comes out on the 17th. We have six more days to meme. That being said, uh, we have five more days of YouTube videos before the new expansion comes out. So we have five days of a top five coming up. In the next five days, I'll give you a top five, whether it's about what's going on right now or the brand new expansion. I'm really, really excited for it. I think it's gonna be fantastic and I think you're really gonna enjoy it. Make sure to like and subscribe. And that being said, I will see you all tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Bye, everyone.